Okay, so one of my subscribers on YouTube asked me to post a video uh, just describing the difference between HTP, which is highest takes precedence, and LTP, which is latest takes precedence. So I just set up a little scenario here to uh, show you what the difference is. First of all, realize that the way DMX works, that it's not just sig sending one signal out to a light or a dimmer pack. It's constantly sending signals out. As a matter of fact, it refreshes all of the signals to all the lights on average about 44 times a second, depending upon your interface. So that means it's constantly sending signals out to that dimmer pack or to that light as to what it should be doing. If it's a dimmer pack, what the value should be, if it's at 50%, 75%, 25%. Uh, if it's a light, it's sending out those DMX uh, computer bit code telling it, you know, where should the blue channel be set, where should be the green set, where the red should be set, how about any uh, color macros or strobes or any other functions. So it's always sending out that information. Now, one of the things on uh, QLC Plus, you can take a look here. I'm going to go to my fixture setting. All right, your common everyday run-of-the-mill incandescent house lights here. And there's a feature up here that has to do with your dimming curve. But it also shows you some information about the light. So I'm going to select this front of house light dimming curve. Now if I go in here and do front of house 1, you'll notice that it says it's HTP, which is highest takes precedence. So that's the way this channel is set. You can switch it to latest takes precedence if you want to just by doing a switch there. And over here, we have a number of dimming curves. I'm going to talk about this in a later video just quickly. What that is for is if, if you've ever noticed that LED lights tend to come on quicker and brighter than incandescent lights do. So when you're doing a fade up on stage or a fade down, it's usually kind of uneven because the LED lights will come up quicker. Well, one of the features you can do in QLC Plus is you can go in, you can reset the fade curve so that it matches the way that the incandescents fade up and it looks some more, a little more uniform on stage than when you're doing a fade up or a fade down. We're going to do that in a separate video too, though, talk about fade curves. So now let's take a look at our slim par lights down here. So I'm going to select one of my slim pars and I'm going to go to fixture edit here and bring up the slim par. Notice the different channels. So it has a red, green, blue channel and then a color macro strobe and a mode of, uh, channel and then a dimmer. Notice that the red, green, blue and dimmer are set to highest takes precedence, but the color macro and strobe and mode is latest takes precedence. That is usually common. Anything that has to do with intensity like a color channel or a dimmer is usually set to highest takes precedence, whereas the um, effects like changing uh, a gobo or changing a mirror or adding a, some kind of macro or opening up an iris, those kind of things are usually latest takes precedence. Now I'll go back to my virtual console and we'll illustrate here. So um, I've got a scene four here. I'm going to bring up, let's go to run mode. And in scene four, I have my front of house lights on. I'm going in DMX here instead of the 3D view, I'm going to go in 2D view so you can actually see the values and we're showing the DMX values, not the percent values here. So it's 0 to 255. And my front of house lights are set at 162. And then I also have my PARs on and I've used the color macro here. So I'm running a color macro. It's at 160. I really don't know what color this would be. Um, unfortunately, whoever put in the definitions for this lamp they don't say, but they have a, a bunch of selected colors you can go through. So let's just say 160 is uh, green. All right, so my PARS is set at uh, a color macro setting of 160 and the intensity is 255. Now, if I go to change and I'm going to do a color macro 30 here, if I, this is an independent, and this button would change the color macro to 30. If you watch here, it will actually change. All right, see the color macro changed to 30? And if I release this button, it goes back to the original value that it was set at in scene 4. So this is an LTP channel. So I can, whatever is the latest information that I send to the light. So if I click on this, I'm telling it to go to color macro 30. And it does. It goes to color macro 30. And then if I release it, it goes back to the 160 that was set with scene 4. 
Now, so that's latest takes precedence. Let's take a look. Our front of house lights here are set at 162. This button is supposed to change the front, the front of house lights to 25% or around a DMX value of about 60. Watch what happens when I click it. Nothing happens. These stay at 162 because it's getting two values being sent to it. This scene four is telling it to go to a DMX value of 162. This button is telling it to go to a DMX value of 60. Because it's highest takes precedence, it's going to go with the 162 number. Now, if I release this scene four, you will see this go to 60. But if I put scene four back in, highest takes precedence, the 162 will take over there. Let's take a look at it again. So changing it to, tw uh, to um, and this 25 refers to 25%. So if I click on that, no effect, because this scene four is still sending at a highest takes precedence signal of go to 162. But as soon as I release this, it will go down to 60. And vice versa too. If I have this on at 60, and then I put in a higher value, the scene four, it will jump up there. And also, you can actually do this with the sliders, too. Um, take a look here. I'm going to use my front of house sliders that are up here. Keep your eye here on front of house number one. Now, my slider won't have any effect on it until when it's below 60. But as soon as it gets above 60, the DMX value is 60. Now it has an effect on it. When it comes back down, I cannot make it go down to zero. It will stop at 60 because this one is sending it a signal to stay at 60. So even though I go below a DMX value of 60, it stays at 60. If I release that, now I have my full value here from 255 to zero. So that's the rules for highest takes precedence. Now, one of the things you want to keep in mind too when you're working with the uh, color lights, and we'll, we'll give you an illustration here. I'm going to go to scene five. And in scene five, I have my front of house lights on, but I, I set my PAR lights. My channel one red is set to full, and my dimmer is up to full. So right now, the PAR lights are on red. Now, over here, I have a setting for the PAR lights to go blue. So in this instruction over here, it's saying that red should be at zero, blue should be at 255, and intensity should be at 255. Let's see what happens. All right, blue comes up to 255, intensity stayed at 255, but also your red stayed on at 255. So surprise, surprise, you're not getting blue pars now, you're getting pink. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing buttons to change colors of your pars, that again, it's highest takes precedence. So if we had two buttons on here, this button is saying, you know, red should go off, but this button button is saying red should be a 255. So it's highest takes precedence, so the red will stay at 255. So instead of getting blue pars, you get blue at 255 and red at 255. So that's another way of looking at uh, the highest takes precedence. Something to consider if you're designing buttons to change your uh, uh, par colors in that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Another thing you want to take a look at here, and I've just turned scene four back on again. And this is another item to keep in mind when you're working with latest takes precedence channels. So right now I have my scene four up and look at my pars. Uh, my color macro is at 160 and my intensity set at 255. Watch what happens when I release this scene four. The color macro stays at 160. All right, so if I happen to bring up a slider up here and I bring up my red and I bring up my intensity and I'm going what wow, something's wrong why isn't my light going to red that's because this color macro stayed up at 160 from the previous setting they usually tend to stay where they were previously set latest takes precedence so they'll stay at that value and with this particular light the color macro settings override the slider settings. So if you happen to be working with this and you go, this doesn't make any sense. I just slid my red channel up to 255, intensity 255, but I'm not getting that color. It might be that your color macro setting is on and it's overriding your other channels on there, which can give you some uh, kind of some funky results on there. So again, 
one of the benefits of uh, QLC Plus having this DMX view is you can actually look at values because as soon as you look at this, you go, oh, okay, there's something going on here because I have a color macro uh, setting that's coming in. So somehow you'd have to go in here and change that and get rid of that color macro setting. All right, again, something to keep in mind when you're doing working with HTP and LTP lights.